Hello and welcome back to the channel where I've been restoring this 2005 BMW Z4 back to its former glory. Now you might remember in the last episode I did some work to restore those headlights. You can probably still see on that one. I've still got some condensation but they're two different colours. So I'm going to take that one out anyway and swap it for a silver one which is the one that should be on this car. Anyway, whilst I was doing that work and had the car up in the air I saw that I've still got a pretty bad oil leak under there. It looks like it's coming from the oil pan gasket. So I'm going to take the oil pan off, replace the gasket. While I'm in there I'm going to replace the notorious oil pump nut that has a habit of unwinding itself on these cars for some reason. Nice one BMW. Trouble is in order to do that I've got to drop the subframe and pretty much all the suspension components are attached to the subframe and pretty much all the suspension components are knackered. So you know what they say every challenge is an opportunity and this is my opportunity to completely strip all of this knackered suspension. This is going to be a pretty big job. I've finally got a good day's weather so if you're ready for this hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hope you enjoy the process. Let's do this. I mean, you can see it's a pretty bad oil leak there, it's literally dripping. Hopefully this will be the last of them. It does look like it's coming from the sump gasket just because it runs right the way along that seam there. And as you can see, all of the subframe needs dropping and all the suspension components are attached to that. All of which pretty short, I might as well do the tie rods while I'm at it. Uh, I've got some new track control arms, new bushes, new anti-roll bar bushes, drop links. And I've also gone all out and bought myself some flyovers, so let's do it. Play there is in that and that. No wonder it felt pretty sketchy at higher speeds. Look at that, wow. Shop. When all else fails. Next, just taking the anti-roll bar off. It's just held on with two brackets. Each has two bolts in it. Pretty easy to remove once the drop links are disconnected. So this is an engine support beam and it's all that's gonna stop the engine falling out the bottom of the car when I take the subframe off because the engine mounts are mounted onto the subframe. So this prevents my head getting crushed basically. So it's quite a valuable investment. Uh, I've never used one of these before, but I know that they're supposed to go sideways usually, but the engine support bracket is there and there's absolutely nothing there to mount it on except for the wings, which I'm not going to do. There is a pretty good strong point there and a good strong point back there and I can see that that's pretty solid. That's got the weight of the engine there, so I'm pretty happy with that. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't, I guess I'll die. Just one nut to remove from the top of each engine mount, which I access using a few extension bars joined together. Now it's just a load of stuff down here, so I'm going to take those lollipop bushes off the end of these control arms, and then this whole subframe should come off and give us access to the oil pan. Easy. This makes it slightly less sketchy. I guess. Ah, that's why. I just got to turn the steering wheel. Duh. That just made me realise that I need to disconnect the steering rack, don't I? That's the only thing still attached to the car after I undo these bolts. So. That's the bit there. That'll be a splined connection and there's a little e-bolt in there. Then it should all just drop down and I should be able to get to my oil pan. So let's have it. 
So I had a go at this with a ham ratchet at first, but it felt pretty stiff and it almost felt like I was gonna break the bolt. I ended up taking it out very carefully with my impact wrench. I think it had some Loctite on it, so I'll be sure to replace that when I put it back in. Right, and now I just need to separate that somehow. Yeah, there we go, nice. Okay, that's disconnected. There's one more thing that I need to do. The oil dipstick goes down into the oil pan down there. So there's one bolt there that holds it in place. And then I think it's just a push fit down there. Uh, I'm not sure if you can make that out on camera, but um, yeah, just a push fit. So I'm gonna remove that bolt and uh, get that unplugged. Just a push fit into the sump here, but yeah, it is nice. But yeah, I think I do need to remove this air box. So I've just loosened it off because there's not a lot of room to get that out until I actually drop the oil pan. So uh, I put all these bolts back in just for safekeeping. That's the one that just holds the dipstick in place. And that's it now. Now I really can drop the subframe. Subframe, nice. Yeah, gotta get the control arms off that. Tie rods as well. But for now, I'm gonna focus on the oil pan gasket. Get that oil pan off while the weather's good. Let's go. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it does look like that's leaking, doesn't it? Get that. Right, next job, dump the oil. What do you think? Can I do it without making a mess? So while that's draining, I might as well start loosening all these bolts. There's loads of them around the edge. There's also that oil level sensor, I think that is in the bottom that I'm gonna need to disconnect. So yeah, let's have it. So I've got all of the bolts out, and I still can't get the pan off for some reason. I can see there's a bit of movement there, but I just can't seem to get it, get it loose. And I don't think I've missed any bolts. Absolutely shitloads of them. It should come away now, but I don't seem to be able to get it off. So I've just noticed the reason I'm having such a hard time here, this is a bit of a rookie error. I've just found two bolts up inside the tranny that obviously need to come out and then I bet it comes out, comes out real easy. Yep. Well, there's a lesson learned. If you're ever doing this, it's a good tip for you, undo all the bolts. Not, ah, not the best. Ooh. Right, oil pan off. What a pain that was. Yeah, I'll give it a good clean up. And there's my oil pump nut. I've got a replacement for that guy. That guy, apparently on this engine, has a habit of winding itself off when you drive them hard. So while I've got this open, I'm gonna take it off, replace it, and I've got a special nut with a hole in it and some locking wire, so I'll get that replaced. But yeah, nice, it's off, finally. All right, let's get to work. 
You can probably see there, there's a bit of rust building up on the mating surface, so I just tried to get it off as best I could with the scouring pad. That's probably what caused the leak in the first place, and actually, realistically, I'm never going to get it perfect. Even though I've got a brand new gasket to put on there, I'm also going to use some liquid gasket sealant just to make sure that we don't get any oil leaks whatsoever after this job. Right, let's sort that nut out. Came off pretty easy. So obviously if that comes off whilst you're driving and that sprocket comes off, well, your engine is scrap. So this is just a drilled nut and it's got uh, some locking wire with it. So just get a little bit of a uh, little bit of thread lock on there. happy with that. At least I know that ain't gonna go anywhere. So I'm just gonna give all of this a good clean up and then offer the sump back up to it. I'm gonna put some sealant around it as well. Oh nice bit of oil dripping my ear. back on all right I've put the oil pan back on and I didn't put the dipstick back in before I put it on because I was having a nightmare rolling around trying to get it in the right place and I just thought I'd figure it out later which is possibly a bit of a mistake because I'm gonna have to remove this so that I can get it back in the right place. I'm gonna do it now. Took a bit of elbow grease, but I got that air intake pipe off, which I actually discovered was split as well. So that's another piece I'm gonna to have to replace. The dipstick tube wasn't much easier to get in either. That required a lot of wriggling around, but thankfully I managed it. Right, oil pan, done. Now I've just got to strip this subframe, get it all back on there. I am running out of daylight, so it's like, 20 past four, it's probably gonna be dark in like an hour or so. I'm probably gonna have to call this a day at some point and come back to it tomorrow, but I'm just gonna do a little bit more, see how far I can get on. Fingers crossed, I can get it to such a place that I don't need that engine support beam there anymore. Let's go, wish me luck, come on. Now just before I put the subframe back on, I realized that it's absolutely covered in oil. So I just emptied half a can of brake cleaner over it and gave it a good scrub to try and get it up as best as I could. That way I'll be able to see any oil leaks in the future quite easily. I'm filthy, I'm knackered, I'm sore. I've cracked my hand with the hammer. It is gonna rain all day tomorrow. So I'm gonna have to get this as weather tight as I possibly can. Pain in the ass, I really need to get my garage built, but I've just gotta work with what I've got at the moment. As you can see, I've run out of light, but I really want to get this subframe back on so I don't need the engine support bracket. So I'm going to have a go at getting that back on before I pack everything away. So 
uh, the subframe bolt are uh, to be torqued to 100 newton meters. Come on. Nice. Subframe back on. Talk to spec. Sweet. That means. I just need to double check that the engine sat properly on the engine mounts and then I can take the engine support beam off which means I can close the bonnet which means everything's sound overnight so I'll see you maybe not tomorrow because it's going to be raining but I'll see you the next time it's not raining. Peace out.